Hi, my name is Masha, I'm the Coding Blonde, and today we're talking about front end because it's front end February. This is part two of my interview with Nick, who is an instructor at General Assembly. And today we're talking about the different programming languages within front end. And Nick is giving you some advice on where to start and talking about the different areas, the different professions there are in front end. So let's go for it. Hi, Nick. Hey, how's it going? Good, thank you. How are you? I'm good, glad to be here. <laughs> thank you so much for answering more of my questions Absolutely. about front end. I am very excited for my audience to um, hear more about front end and what you can do. Excited to talk to them. So my first question for you, and we've kind of touched on it in the previous uh, video. What are the front end languages? What should you learn if you want to be a front end developer? Right. Uh, so. There's only really three languages on the front end. That's going to be HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. Uh, so HTML is going to be like the nouns, or uh, I'll, I guess I'll use a different metaphor here, the bones. So it is the structure of the actual web page. CSS is going to be the skin, the clothing, mm -hmm. the style overall, how something looks. And then JavaScript is going to be the muscle, the mm -hmm. things that actually make those objects move. Everything we've invented since then has been some sort of remix of that. Angular, React, uh, these are all tools that remix those basic ideas and make it a little bit easier to manipulate them, but it's all still the same three languages. Mm -hmm. And what are Angular and React? Are those frameworks? Are those libraries? So Angular is a framework, React mm -hmm. is more of a library. Basically what they've done is they've uh, taken JavaScript, HTML, CSS, and repackaged it into a way that makes it easier to manipulate data on the front end. So mm -hmm. last time we talked about a restaurant metaphor. Mm -hmm. uh, you're making stuff in the back, uh, making food in the back, which is the back end, and from the wrong readings of the database, you're bringing it to the front end, serving it, and giving the user options. Um, when you have the ability to manipulate data on the front end, it's closer to like a Benihana restaurant mm -hmm. where someone is in the back like chopping up the raw vegetables and meat, but then they're bringing it out and there's someone in the front end who's then remixing and making that food in front of you. So uh, what Angular and React do is it allows a lot more data manipulation on the front end. It's the reason we see single page applications mm -hmm. where uh, content can be refreshed without having to refresh your browser. You're, say, uh, on Facebook or something, and you're seeing little notifications pop up in real time. Uh, you're seeing comments getting added to individual pieces there. That's what those get to do. So um, you don't always need them, and, but they can be very useful if you want to extend the functionality of your metaphorical restaurant. Fair enough. That, that's awesome. And because um, I actually had a huge problem understanding how frameworks work. So, because gotcha. um, I was trying to make a video about yeah. it and then I just got stuck. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's a rabbit hole that I ended up going down. <laughs> it's a good rabbit hole. There's a lot of content in there. Yeah. Very There's a lot going on. A heavy, heavy yeah. rabbit hole. <laughs> so, because there's three different languages, are there different parts to um, front end? Would you say that there are different professions that would exist within front-end development? Sure. And if so, what are they? <laughs> yeah, so um, the names for these are kind of things that track and change throughout the industry's development. Um, it just used to be web designer or mm -hmm. like webmaster, but now obviously we have a million different terms. The role that I've filled a whole lot in jobs has been a UX developer, mm -hmm. which is someone who straddles the creation of design through Sketch, Photoshop, uh, or Illustrator, and then also does some HTML and CSS work. So this mm -hmm. is someone who's very design oriented and has design skills, but also knows enough programming to make some, and I mean, it's arguable if HTML and CSS is actually programming, but knows enough code to be able to construct those websites themselves. A true just front end developer would be someone working in HTML, CSS, and JavaScript daily. HTML and CSS, through to JavaScript, there's a definite sliding scale of difficulty. Mm -hmm. HTML is fairly simple. Uh, once you understand how kind of the conventions work, uh, it's pretty easy to start making HTML pages, but they don't look like anything or do anything. They look like Craigslist, mm -hmm. uh, only you can't buy anything through it. So adding CSS is very straightforward and easy to understand because it has words like, for the class of box, color is red. It mm -hmm. reads like English. It's fairly easy, but the way that the individual calls stack on top of each other and cascade, which is what CSS stands for, cascading style sheets, 
you end up kind of becoming your own worst enemy if you put them in the wrong order or overwrite yourself or contradict yourself in places. Whereas a lot of programming languages are like prose where you have to say words in the right order, CSS is like poetry. Mm -hmm. You can do it in all different orders and arrange it in whatever way feels right to you. And if it means something to you, then it's good. Uh, however, it doesn't always mean that it's understandable. Mm -hmm. uh, you have to kind of work to keep consistency. JavaScript is normally where people start to hit a really tough wall because it involves a lot of algebra and mm -hmm. a lot of math and the scale starts to go up in terms of how difficult it is, that learning curve. It can do everything from uh, make a box spin around to submit JSON data to a server and return that data into a format. It, it really covers a huge amount of ground, especially now that we have things like Node.js. So, uh, oh, I got off on a tangent here. What was the original question? <laughs> uh, the original question was about the professions that the professions within those, yes. Yeah. So if you are leaning very much into JavaScript development, there's mm -hmm. a chance, at least this state of web development, that you're also working with routing and a little bit of backend. Mm -hmm. And I tend to hear that more described as a front-end engineer, mm -hmm. someone who is proficient at the front-end, but also can write the JavaScript that needs to interact with that back-end. Mm -hmm. um, that being said, you can really focus on all different areas. Um, I love CSS, that's my favorite language, and I worked for years as a CSS developer. I, of course, wrote HTML as part of that, and occasionally a little JavaScript, but I just love diving into complex structures. Um, there are people who love JavaScript, and that's purely what they want to do. And definitely the larger the company you work for is, the more chance you'll have for specialization. Whereas if you like doing lots of different things, um, working for smaller companies can give you a chance to work in HTML, CSS, JavaScript, and maybe a little backend all in a day. Mm -hmm. And so that interaction with the backend, that's through the JSON files, right? So JSON is one way of doing it. You mm -hmm. can think of it as, in the restaurant metaphor, you're ordering food and you're seeing a menu, mm -hmm. but that menu has to be explained in a very machine way to your server that's getting okay. that data. So the JSON tends to be that uh, insider language between the waiter and the chef. Fair they enough. know how to explain to each other this is how it works. JSON is just a type of data format that can be given to you on the front end raw that you can then put into beautiful containers. And what about mobile? Because obviously mobile apps, there's there's an app for that, you know, all, oh, all, yeah. all the stuff like yeah. everybody thinks mobile, sometimes mobile first. So how yes. does mobile development work? So when it comes to responsive websites, uh, websites that then when you shrink them down to phone size, that's the same technology as everything else. But when it comes to native modal apps, Android or iOS, those are completely different languages. And uh, even though the core ideas of design and programming at a high level are transferable to mobile design, they require a completely different set of tools to be able to be an effective developer. So if you trained to be a full stack web developer and then decided you want to make iOS apps, you still have a lot more learning to do because now you need to learn how to specifically write in Swift in Xcode mm -hmm. to be able to produce those apps. Mm -hmm. And what about there's um, some sort of environment where you can write JavaScript and create mobile apps for Android and iOS. Is yes. that correct? Yeah, we have HTML wrappers like React Native or uh -huh. PhoneGap. Um, this is, I'll get a little UXy here. The problem with this is that native apps, uh, they have a very certain touch and feel to them. You have Apple with HIG design, their human mm -hmm. interface guidelines. You have Google with, uh, and Android with their uh, material design. And they're two different design philosophies, which means that theoretically, if you have the same app, uh, like uh, Venmo or something, mm -hmm. the iOS app should feel very different than the material app on Android. Venmo is a good example though of that they've leaned into material design and their iOS app looks like an iOS app, or um, yeah, their iOS app looks like a material app. Huh. But when you do something with PhoneGap, in mm -hmm. general, what you end up is with something that doesn't look native to either. Okay. or only looks native to one. Now there are ways that you can split that off further, but generally I suggest those types of wrappers for small companies that are trying to get to market quickly. So if you have a team that writes web and are full stack developers, they could probably get up on React Native fast enough to be able to produce apps for your store that maybe they don't look like a perfect HIG or material app, but they're fine and they work. 
And then later, when you have a little bit more uh, capital to play with, you could hire iOS developers or Android developers. Uh, this is completely different from a team that might start up with specifically the idea of launching an iOS app. So mm -hmm. everyone they uh, hire has iOS skills, they make an app easy, and then they actually have to hire people later to actually make a web presence for them because all they have is the app. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of different ways you can slice it and I like what you know things like React Native are doing and I think we're going to get a lot further with it, but right now it's still um, something that's an imperfect science. So would you say this is kind of the tool for prototyping, more or less? Yeah, and you know, a lot of people I'm sure are going to be like, no, no, it's, <laughs> it's really perfect for this. This is my personal opinion, of course. Mm -hmm. um, I think that React Native is a great way to move quickly and put good ideas on both platforms. When we're talking about really polished prod products by big companies, you probably have three teams, web, iOS, and Android. But uh, there's nothing wrong with a company just running with React Native, or a developer for that matter, just for getting to understand the conventions of each device. Mm -hmm. So it really depends. There's plenty of apps out there that we use all the time that were built with something like React Native. Fair enough, yeah. Um, but it is very important to make it feel native. It is very yes. important to feel... Just the smallest piece can throw it off completely, yeah. Yeah, I can imagine. Or also not understanding the specificities of the different devices. I yeah. don't know if that's the right word, but yeah, for example, totally. on Android, I have a, a button that takes me back, but on iOS, there isn't a button to go back. So you yes. have to consider those two Absolutely. Uh, different audiences. So yeah, that's a, that's a very good point from the UX. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you so much. This has been so super, welcome. super useful. And I hope Good you guys vibe. know now what you would like to focus on and where to start in terms of languages. Yeah. <laughs> I hope you've enjoyed this video and that you found something useful and interesting for yourself. Also, make sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel because there's part three of this interview coming out where Nick will share his advice and tips on how to get started front end and how to approach searching for jobs. Have a wonderful time of the day you're currently experiencing. Bye.